And, uh, of course, Mark Ames, how you doing? he's got a track record of running. Well, that's right. I, I've got my running shoes on this morning, Dick. God bless you and the staff out here at KJMP and the Listers this morning. This is my first... Uh, first over the coffee cup. Yeah, first over the coffee cup. Oh, I thought you'd been here before. In these decades. No, oh. I usually take uh, the evening uh, programs that you schedule for us. Uh -huh. uh, well, I'm a grateful native-born Alaskan-American here from the interior. Um was raised on a homestead jolly acres out here in north pole and uh i remember getting my first transmitter radio when i was a kid and picking up kjmp back in 1967 <laughs> right of course that was alaska's uh centennial year as well of course you lived that close you probably didn't even need a radio you could just uh, you know no just pick up the phone and get it <laughs> on the line, the right. get the line powerful transmitter <laughs> uh i'm out here i'm a candidate for assembly seat b uh i've ran off and on uh trying to focus attention on the six published goals of Alaska's State Historic Preservation Plan. It uh, deals with historic resources. Uh, um, I have been interested many years over the Alaska State Hood Compact Section 28A190% provision, uh, worth billions to the state and millions to Alaska's rural and urban communities. And basically what that was is an entitlement to Alaskans as the primary beneficiaries, the principal parties of ownership interest, was the subsurface mineral oil and gas that's extracted and developed from federal lands in Alaska, the legislature was to get a 90% royalty revenue provision. Well, that's not happening. It hasn't happened uh, since statehood, which was 92 years after session. And they continue to reduce it. Uh, one of the last uh, points that was made, uh, what I recognizes intellectual property, our state attorney general said that this can't be changed without the state's consent, that's the people, uh, or acquiescence. And it was at that time that they were making further changes and an expression of interest came from the Fairbanks North Star Borough. And I thought that was significant because it was unanimous. They claimed the 90% interest that blocked the acquiescence. And of course our constitution was written in the interior. And I'm just so uh, glad that we've got uh, the opportunity to share this information from the Golden Heart interior with other communities, uh, rural communities out there. Uh, we're trying to preserve our interest in that. And as a result, the state legislature passed state legislative resolve number 5, 2000 one reaffirming that provision, but we've gotten no follow-up from the Fairbanks North Star Borough Assembly on that count. Uh, we have no follow-up from the city of Fairbanks, unfortunately, nor the city of North Pole, which this should be addressed through the Economic Development Commissions. Uh, we have this filed. The city of North Pole and the city of Fairbanks also filed their interests in this, and it influenced the state to reaffirm our 90% after Wally Hickel, in his second term, filed Alaska versus USA over this 90% uh, as as a matter of fact, these documents that I'm talking about, recorded in the 4th Judicial District here, the then State Attorney General did not submit these in the case. So the judge said, well, what 90%? And ruled against the state. Okay. But, but again, uh, our uh, state legislature reaffirmed that 90%. And it is okay. It's okay with me as a grateful native-born Alaskan-American because this is a part of our providential section 2881 90% provision, our state and nation's providential land-based provisions, and we should keep our eye on that. Uh, <clears throat> another land-based uh, interest I'm working on is our Alaska U.S. Centennial site. Uh, you were born in Minnesota, is that correct, Dick? North Dakota. North Dakota? North Dakota. Oh, okay. I came up here from Minnesota, but I lived in North Dakota for 17 years of my life. Yeah. Okay, and uh, that's where nice you were born. Farm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're a native-born North Dakota, North Dakota no. American uh, uh, farmer, Alaskan by domicile. Okay. <laughs> North Dakota plowboy, well, they call Well, it. you know, I want to just let you know, as well as all the listeners, uh, most of which are from one of our sister states, uh, all 50 states have been ripped out of our Alaska-U.S. 1867-1967 
67 Centennial Commemorative Landmark Public Park site, formerly the A67 site, uh, most recently formerly known as Alaska Land, mm -hmm. uh, now known as Pioneer Park that right. the uh, uh, former assembly member had mentioned. We're trying to preserve institutional remembrance of our Centennial site uh, through a title place name modification that's been supported by the Chena Riverfront Commission. That's the city and borough, Chena Riverfront Commission, the Historic Preservation Commission, as well as the Economic Development Commission, uh, which all support this. Uh, however, we're not getting the leadership that we need from uh, incumbents on the assembly, many of which uh, attended unlawful secret meetings, which I've learned recently this topic was brought up over. And so I'm asking uh, all the voters out there to oust incumbents or prior assembly members and uh, can I entertain any questions, Dick, that you might have? No, not today. We <laughs> very well. well I'll uh, I'll just close by uh, sharing a co one of the most re comments that have come in on this. You know, we have the bed tax. Uh -huh. uh, this is where a lot of money being uh, collected from the people that have uh, bed and breakfasts and this kind of thing. Well, the Fairbanks Association of Bed and Breakfasts has provided this comment, and it is regarding Alaska's centennial site. Uh, Dear Honorable Mayor and Assembly, as Fairbanks North Star Borough, Fairbanks is. Association of Bed and Breakfasts voted at their April 12, 2007 meeting to send a letter of support for the word Centennial to be added to the name of Pioneer Park. As business owners in the tourist industry, we are interested in historic sites which we may recommend to our visitors. As lodging hosts who interact one-on-one -on -one with our guests, the name Centennial Pioneer Park would give us an opportunity to <laughs> explain the significance and the historical importance of that 1967 Centennial site. It is something to be proud of, and we are very lucky that Fairbanks was chosen to be the location. Fairbanks North Star Borough has lost many of its historic sites that give today's residents a link with the past. Please consider changing the name to Centennial Pioneer Park to protect this site from identity loss. Respectfully, Ted E. Baker, Fairbanks Association of Bed and Breakfast Secretary, uh, there is an attempt at this point to eclipse and extinguish institutional memory of what and where Alaska's centennial site is. It was chosen in 65 by Governor Egan and the Alaska State Centennial Commission after a competitive statewide search to find a suitable location in 65. In 66, 36 President Johnson and Congress passed the Alaska Centennial Appropriation, which led to the constructive development of this wonderful site. And... Uh, Okay, so what, what do we have to do to change it? Well, apparently we have to pull teeth from uh, from uh, from uh, 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 grizzly, I guess. Uh, this is the question. Uh, I mean, where does it have, well, have to go? I mean, why not add centennial? Yeah. Well, I've presented to go toward the toward the over the uh, uh, to the uh, borough, and then they vote on it. Well, the borough assembly, but the, but, but, but what they're doing not a public thing that people vote on. Well, it should be. Yeah, it should be just like the providential ninety percent land base provision. If you that you have a public interest in, if they're going to reduce our 90% provisions for the extraction of our resources, then they should communicate, cooperate, and coordinate with the principal parties of ownership interests, Alaskans, rural and urban. Now, this is a historic public interest, and if they're going to change the name of it, they should communicate, and, and it should be something that at least uh, the regional interiorite people should be able to vote for. How can the uh, general public get their uh, input in? They well, they can send a centennial letter of support, uh, uh, record a little family history, rural and urban, send it in to the Fairbanks North Star Borough, Marin Assembly, P.O. Box 71267 Fairbanks, Alaska, 99707. Uh, reference Alaska's centennial site and that you'd like to see the word centennial added to restore balance. We're not all in the private club. We're not all in the private pioneer club, Dick. Uh -huh. You know, we love the pioneers, especially the considerate ones, but we don't want to supplant Alaska's contemporary heritage uh, with that of a private uh, clubs. And so this is where the addition of the okay, word centennial you. would be beneficial. Okay, we got some more guests, so we got to get go rolling here. But uh, uh, if anybody wants to contact you about these situations, you got a phone number? Uh, yes, please give me a call at 457-5096. Uh, God bless all the people out there listening in, in KJMP Radio Land. Uh, and you are running for uh, assembly seat B. Assembly seat B. Okay. Uh, my opponent, Luke Hopkins, is uh, one that's turned a blind eye and a deaf ear to this simple uh, uh, interest 
which we should ch champion. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mark. Day. Bless you. We'll have more time to talk to you during our uh, forums, okay?